Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal and thanks to Jonathan St. John for this request, how to show titles behind a subject. Like I said, thank you very much to Jonathan for uh, requesting this one, and uh, I put together a few examples. Uh, the good news, I have a tutorial. The bad news, it ain't easy. <laughs> it requires drawing masks and rotoscoping. There's, you can either do this in Premiere Pro or you can do it in After Effects. There's no hard and fast rules on which one. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, some basic things to watch out for in Premiere Pro. And then uh, I'll, I'll tease you with a couple of tutorials that I'll do in the future that are really crazy. All right, let's have a look. So let me just make this bigger. And we can see our subjects are in the front and the text is in the background. You can see it looks like the text is over those trees maybe, but basically away from them. Now, as soon as I move a frame ahead, you'll see a problem. The holes that I cut don't move with the subjects. The holes work only uh, at the beginning of that frame. How do we do this? All right, let's go have a look. So first of all, let's look at our layers. I've got three different layers. The bottom layer is the footage, the original footage. The second layer is the title, and the title shows up over top of those um, and the top one is a copy of the footage with just an area that's going to overlap on the background. So the um, if I'm going to go to the wrench here and turn on my transparency grid just so you can see this a little bit easier, you can see that the text is here and just the top, in fact I probably took way too much um, time to cut this mask out, but basically you find the area that will overlap that background. Now, if we select that text and go look in my effects controls under opacity, so twirl down opacity and you'll see no masks in here. If you click on one of these, and the one we're going to click on is the free draw Bezier path, it creates a path. And you can see this highlighted in this uh, first one over here. Um, I drew one for each one, so one for each because it was pretty easy and the other one's down here a little bit. So let's go in and look at the mask itself. To do that, you have to click in here and zoom in and you can zoom in all the way up to 400% and then you have to use the scroll bars in here and they're a little bit uh, tough to see sometimes. You can also maximize this frame and in a North American keyboard you can uh, tap the tilde key right in here. So this is now maximized and I can see this a little bit better. So this is what I did was, oh yeah, by the way, you better hit this stopwatch over here and turn on the animation. If you draw a bunch of masks and you don't have your first keyframe set, um, you're going to miss all the other animations. So if you happen to have a scroll wheel mouse, the scroll wheel mouse can move a frame at a time. So I'm moving up and down and up and forward with my scroll wheel. And you can see I've drawn that mask. I've already drawn a bunch of points. I could actually do a better job, but uh, you can see that mask is moving around. Now I've hidden the background to show this, but let me just turn that background layer back on. And the reason, whoops, and the reason I like to do that is once I get past where my mask is, so if we go to where the last frame was, right there, I can now move this mask, whoops, I can move this mask I can move this mask around by grabbing the points and moving it around. And and as soon as you touch any one of these, you're going to add another keyframe. If you want to see how this is not equal, but I could drag this around those three and move that. 
and maybe these, and I can also nudge it once I have it selected, the arrow keys uh, work on the keyboard. And again, panning, I'm gonna have to go over to the side and pan this over here, select more of these points and pop that over. You can see I'm, I'm making a mess here of that. If you move your um, pen tool in the middle, it turns to a hand and that's going to move the whole thing around. So to select multiple points, you do have to select and drag on the outside. I can zoom out to 200% and I can select the whole object. So drag around here and I'm using the arrow keys or I can move in the middle and move that object around. So sometimes, and the reason you want to do that is, especially here, sometimes maybe two or three, or if you're lucky, five frames, there it's not actually distorting, it's just moving its position. Um, and you can get away with that just by nudging the whole thing. But because we actually have parallax here, because the camera is not perpendicular to them, uh, they're standing in one spot and the camera is diagonal, on a, on a dolly, uh, then you do get, do get parallax and you get distortion. So I had to go in there and manually move every freaking one of these to each one of these guys. Yikes, that's a lot of work. Now, if you think you can use the tracking, I'll show, let's, let's try that. All right, let's go to our second guy. Go back to the beginning. And the second mask is on the blue assassin. Let's zoom in to 200% so we can see him a little bit better. And remember, when you draw a mask, you also have these tracking controls. And when I pop this out, I can be tracking based on position, rotation, or position scale and rotation. So I'm going to start tracking this guy. And your first thought is, hey, it's doing a good job. But it's, see, you can see it's already missing that information. It's it's an object tracker. It's not a planar tracker. It's not like After Effects or like Mocha. It's great for highlighting a face, removing a logo, but we're already starting to um, move that around. So um, I did another example here with this guy. Let's make this larger. And you'll see a bit of flickering in here because Quite frankly, I wasn't interested in making this look the best job. I was just giving you an idea of how this works. And this little piece here is a couple of hours work. Yes, two hours work just for a few seconds of video. Welcome to the world of rotoscoping. <laughs> Put a gun to your head. Okay, so um, let's look at the same thing. I'll grab my mask and you can see there's my mask that I moved around. That was all done by hand. And you can see by the time I got to here, I didn't care about the bottom of this because it's so far away from where the title is going. And if we turn the background off, what do we have? We have a piece of his torso in front. All you need to do is obscure the front. And you'll notice the second one I had to add in here was his hand showing up. So if I turn all of that on, now you can see him moving in there. So that's the best you can do inside Premiere Pro. Uh, the tracking, you can maybe get away with four, five, six frames and it'll track and then tweak it. Um, but, oh yeah, and remember to set your first keyframe. But let's have a look at the same example uh, done in After Effects. So let me make this larger. Oh lordy, that looks way better. I missed a few things you can see right there. I'm off a little bit. I did use the tracker in After Effects and it did a pretty good job. Again, you can see it off in little pieces in here. But the other thing you're, you're noticing in here that really sells this effect is the title is not static. When this title is sitting there and it's not moving with the parallax, if you got a locked off camera, then you're done, one, one, one mask. But because it, we've got parallax, it really sells this effect. It actually looks like the guys are standing there the, the title is over the tree, and then there's the city beyond that. That's cool. How did I do that? I'll show you in another tutorial. I was actually using the 3D camera tracker to lock that on. The last example um, is also pretty darn amazing. Let's look at this one. And look at that hair in front of the mask. How the heck 
did we get that? Look at the wispy hair on the woman too. You can see that happening right there. That was done using the Roto brush in After Effects and I'm teasing you, I'll show you both those two in future tutorials. All right, so Jonathan St. John, thanks again for your request. Hopefully you understand how, <laughs> how to do it and that it ain't easy. You're going to have to draw masks around everything on that top object and then stick whatever you want in behind it. Whew. A lot of work, but it's worth it. It's a really wicked cool effect when you've got it done. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button for video reveal. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get you looking your best.